Argento is back with a new twisted giallo. Sweet. The impossible is possible. The plot. So an author makes his way to a foreign country. Eh, well, in this case, Italy. And um, right when he gets there, he is questioned by the police. Because a woman was killed in a similar fashion to one of the women that were killed in his books. Not only that, but pages of his famous book Tenebre have been shoved into her mouth. Now a mystery must be unfolded and closed back together like a proper book. This movie could have gone one of many ways. Let's see which way he decided to shock us with. This movie is one big twist followed by another big twist and it just never stops. The Tenebrae Terror. Peach O'Neill, played by Anthony Franciosa, is an author. He is the author of Tenebrae. He is also a main character and an important piece to the puzzle. Bulmer, played by John Saxon. Yes, A Nightmare on Elm Street's a John Saxon. Oh, what else was he on? Uh, let's see. Blood Beach. Hands of Steel. I mean, but most notably, A Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 3 and 7. Annie, played by Daria Nicolotti from Deep Red, is in this film as his assistant of sorts. Detective Jeremani, played by Giuliano Gemma, or Gemma, is working on a murder case. There's a little thing about his character. He reads Peter Neal's books all the time. He just never can find out who the killer is until the very end. He sucks at it. The pacing is pretty good. It runs at about an hour and 41 minutes. The camera work is amazing. There is a one-take panning shot that is impressive and highly intriguing. It goes from one room following up the building to another room around back down to the other room. It's incredible. It's definitely got Argento's signature style. The cinematography and lighting, the night scenes are well lit and look great on Blu-ray. The atmosphere is very crisp and clean, to say the least. Much like the killers in his flicks, Argento knows how to keep things tidy. The gore, the effects, this is one bloody giallo. We get an axe to the head, tons of blood splatter, a bloody impaling and some stabbings, as well as a severed hand. The severed hand is awesome because when she gets it cut off, her, she puts her hand against the wall and sprays blood all over it, creating this macabre work of art. There are some pretty intense stunts, too. There's a woman and a dog who get into a sort of brawl, and uh, I'm surprised how far they took it. Especially because the dog was a Rottweiler. They uh, don't have the best reputation. I'm not saying that I don't believe they're nice animals. I do think they're nice animals, but the director putting his faith on the trainer that much... He could have been skeptical, but like, I'm not using a Rottweiler, screw that. But at this point, Argento was more caring for his camera than the cast and crew. So overall, the effects are nice, neat, and do the trick. And I'd love to show off the bloodletting. The motion picture soundtrack, Goblin, did not return. Claudio Simonetti did. He's part of the Goblin group. And he composed a powerhouse of a score for this film. It's right up there with Deep Red and phenomena as being two of my favorite composed scores for these Dario Argento flicks. It's very big and up to scale. It makes you feel like you're watching something important. This is either my second or my third favorite Argento flick. It's tied with phenomena, but I liked it more than Suspiria. I don't hate Suspiria, I love Suspiria. It's probably my fourth favorite. Argento really carved name into the genre at this point. And if you loved his previous attempts at this subgenre known as Giallo, then you'll go nuts for Tenebre. Overall I give Tenebre a four out of five. Thank you all for watching and 
Lion Brian Gatto, host of Horrors Entertainment. Make sure to like my Facebook and Twitter fan pages in the description below. If you comment and subscribe. <laughs>